Hey, this is Justin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm gonna to show you how to inspect and replace your motorcycle or ATV clutch arm and push rod. Your motorcycle and ATV's clutch takes a lot of abuse. Now there's a lot of different components that make up the clutch, and over time, all of these components wear out. Now some of these components are really obvious when they wear out like a clutch plate. If you fry those, your clutch is gonna start slipping. But some of the components are less obvious but still have an effect on performance. And the two I wanna talk about today are the clutch arm or actuator and the push rod. So the way this works is your clutch arm or actuator arm, when you pull in your clutch lever, it pulls the cable, pulls the arm and it rotates and pushes against the rod. The rod pushes against the pressure plates, takes the pressure off the plates and allows your clutch to disengage. So over time, the actuator and the rod, as they rub together, they start wearing out here over time. All right, the wear on these two parts causes two main problems. Number one, as the metal wears on the actuating arm, it, it creates a big kind of a pit and creates more surface area for the two parts to rub together. That causes a lot of friction. Number two, as that material wears down, it actually changes the angle of the actuating arm and changes the leverage. So the result is a stiffer clutch. The clutch doesn't feel as good. The feel of engagement and disengagement just isn't the same as it was when it was new. All right, so I wanna show you guys how to inspect these two parts. I'm gonna be using a 2004 YZ250 that's got a lot of use on it. And keep in mind that all machines are gonna be a little bit different, but as long as your machine uses an actuating arm and push rod, the mechanics are gonna be the same. All right, so typically the clutch arm is gonna be found on the left side of the motor. That's because it's pushing the rod that runs through the main shaft to your clutch. Now on this particular bike, the clutch arm is actually found under the stator cover next to the flywheel. So I'm gonna pull the flywheel cover off and then we're gonna have to pull the flywheel. So to remove the flywheel, I'm gonna need a flywheel holder to hold it in place. Then I can remove, remove the nut. Now typically on a stock YZ, I like to use the Tusk clutch tool with the pins on the back to hold the flywheel. But since this bike has a GYTR flywheel weight on it, the holes are a little harder to get to, so I'm using this other style of flywheel holder, also from Tusk. With the flywheel holder in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this nut. Now keep in mind, you can also use an air gun to remove this nut. The problem with an air gun, though, is installation. You can't really use an air gun to put this on and torque it correctly. With the nut off, I can remove the flywheel holder now I'm gonna use a flywheel puller to remove the flywheel. Keep in mind on this bike, most bikes, the threads are reversed. Now on this particular flywheel puller from Tusk, it's gonna use a 30 millimeter wrench and a 17. Flywheel pops off. I'll remove the tool and pull the flywheel. Now I'm gonna remove the cable by bending this little tab back, unhook the cable, and now this actuating arm is being held in by this little bolt right here. So it's an Allen with the four millimeter head. Once I pull that out, I should be able to pull out this arm. All right, as you can see on this actuating arm, there is a ton of wear where that thing's hitting the push rod. You can see that compared to a new one. Now, believe it or not, that amount of wear is gonna have a huge effect on the performance of this clutch. That really explains why the feel of this clutch was so bad. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of grease on the new arm and put it in place. Now, there's a little seal right back here. I recommend changing that while you're here. With the arm in place, I can put the bolt back in. Now we can put the flywheel back together. All right, so I'm gonna line up this flywheel like so. Put the washer on, the nut, and then I'll get my holding tool and we'll torque this down. All right, the manual for this bike calls for 40 pounds of torque. All right, with the flywheel on, I'm gonna hook up the cable, 
but as you can see, my cable length is too short. That's because the extra material on this new arm is putting the angle of the arm further down. Now, that's a good thing because this bike was pretty much out of cable adjustment because of the wear on that arm. So I'm gonna put a little slack in the cable with the adjustment right here. Once I've got enough slack, I can hook up the cable to the arm, bend the little tab over, then I can put my clutch cover back on. To get access to the push rod, I'm gonna to need to remove the clutch cover and the pressure plate. I've already gone ahead and drained the oil and removed the brake lever. So I can go ahead and remove this clutch cover. Now I'll remove the pressure plate. All right, with the bolts and springs out, I can remove the pressure plate. Grab the little thrust plate here. Now I can go ahead and remove the rod. And as you can see, compared to the new one, there's also a significant amount of wear on the end of this rod. So putting in the new rod, the new arm, should make a huge difference on the way this clutch feels. You can just slide that into place, put my thrust, thrust washers back in, get the pressure plate on, and then I can put all the springs and bolts back in. Now we can go ahead and put the clutch cover back on. All right, I'll go ahead and put oil in the bike, get the brake pedal back on, adjust my cable free play, and this clutch should work a lot better. All right, so I've set my cable tension. I've got two or three millimeters of play in there, which is very important. And the clutch is not only a lot easier to pull, but it's got a lot more positive feel. So that definitely solved our problem. All right, guys, that's it. Changing out your actuating arm and push rod is fairly simple to do, and it makes a huge difference on the feel of your clutch. I highly recommend you check it when you're doing routine maintenance and changing out or inspecting a clutch. Now be sure and check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, we've got a lot more how-to videos, product spotlights and bike builds, and check out our website, RockyMountainATVMC.com. We have all of your parts, apparel, and accessory needs. Thanks for watching.